till you or I say it's over. Or him. Or him. And or it you. Ain't over. Or it ain't over. <laughs> because you know what? We still have lives to be well lived. And today is no different. Today I am proud. First of all, I'm proud to be with a friend who I met a few years back on an audition that we did. Yeah. And we just fell in love with him. I mean, great singer, great personality, good looking guy. And he's singing one of my, today, one of my favorite songs. So you know what? Mr. Butch DuBarry, we welcome you to Pink Lady Presents. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and, you and, I. and you were in our show in 2016 right. with Ann Margaret and Tony Orlando. That's right. That's you right. and I have and history, don't we? Yeah, I know. And people, <laughs> people were sitting there in the audience, and I kept saying, that's Butch DuBarry. Who are those two people <laughs> with him? <laughs> well, from Quincy, Illinois. Heartland. Heartland. In the, in, the mad, in the middle of the country. And I mean, you grew up singing in church. True, I did. And, and I was forced to attend. Well, yeah. Right? But my mother <laughs> and my grandmother both were gospel singers and I sang in church. And there has always been music in the family, but uh, not secular music, at right. least until I hit about 14. And then I sort of broke away and started rocking and rolling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What did they say to that? Especially your grandmother. What did she say? My mother said, <laughs> that music is sinful. And I would, <laughs> And you know what I told her? What? I said, some of these sisters that are in the church were down at the club last night. Ah, 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 <laughs> so, ah. Oh, boy. You know. Oh, you know, boy. I no. get it. But at, later on, as I became a recording artist, she was very supportive and stuff like that. When she found out that although I was in the music business, I wasn't taking part of the, the, the drugs yeah. and the stuff right. like that. The drinking and, and stuff like that. I had a certain amount of success that made the whole town very proud of me yeah. because I was that boy that played down in the club at the VFW. Ah, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and I wasn't old enough to be in there with alcohol. <laughs> You know, at 14, 15, oh, wow. the veterans are in there drinking, and sure Butch Dewberry's in there on his drums and playing and singing, oh. and, and every once in a while, someone who was jealous would call the police, and they'd come and drag me out. Are you kidding me? And then me? my father would come down to the jail and get me out. And get you, know, you out. And say, you know better than that. So I anyway, love it. You don't want to hear about it. No, I love it, though. But yeah, we do. Want to hear yeah, we do. It. Now, how young were you when you entered the Army? I would say, let me see, I would say 19. 19. 19, okay. Yeah, well, and then uh, in the Army, you had a particular duty, I would say, once you were in there, and that was the military police, Leavenworth, Kansas? Fort. Fort Leavenworth. Leavenworth. Can wow. There is a Leavenworth, Kansas, okay. which is right outside the fort. Right. But I was stationed at Fort Leavenworth and then the town of Leavenworth. And how did you get that duty, and what was it like? Well... Uh, being a military policeman sort of uh, fit my personality. It was a lot of discipline, okay, a whole lot. Yeah. I even ran in the competition and won Soldier of the Month. Really? You have to you have to know your general orders, who the commanding general is, the chain of command, and all that stuff. Right. And I won Soldier of the Month and stuff like that. But I was playing music at night. Every night I could when I was off. As soon as I took off the police hat, I put on my other hat, and oh. I was rocking and rolling and singing country and stuff like that. Now, so any particular funny story that you have to tell us on our audience about mm -hmm. Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, military police? I did some dumb stuff when I was in the Army. Really? Okay. Really, because music has always been my priority. Right. And sometimes, as a military policeman, your duty would be to take trustees yes. out on the road mm -hmm. okay. to do work, like yard work and stuff, oh, right. and cut okay. trees and gravel and right. stuff like that. Trustees were guys who were allowed to come out. Okay. And a couple times, after playing in the nightclub until 2 a.m., picking up the trustees at 6 a.m., and I'm very sleepy, they would climb up into my military police truck, I would drive way out in the country where we were supposed to cut weed, and they had axes, sickles, hammers, and Butch would fall asleep. Because I've been playing music all night. Oh. There I am asleep in the truck with four or five printers with axes and hammers and stuff like that. And I don't know if that's a happened. funny story. Yes, that's a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> and and you lifted talent. I was going to say, nothing ever happened. No. Because 
I would do favors for them. Like I would bring in KFC chicken Ooh. and put it in the truck and stuff like that, you know. So they were my buddies. Oh, you going to say, yeah. let them sleep. All you, need, okay. all you need in life is fried chicken. That's all you need. Wasn't there a war college there? At, at yes, the Command General Staff College. Okay. No one in our service and a lot of other countries can become a general yeah. without attending that school. Really? I don't care I if it's Patton, that. Eisenhower, Colin Powell, whoever. If you don't graduate from that school, that's why it's called Command General Staff College. In, that, in, that, in Leavenworth? And in for Leavenworth. Leavenworth. You really? have to. Or you can't be a general. Right. No, and, and you had to know what you were doing, otherwise he would come and arrest you. And Ping, there, there's guys there, there would be guys there from 20 different countries. Yeah. Um, uh, China, Iraq, whatever. So as a military policeman, you know, you had to be very careful when you stop one of them for driving on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Number one, there was a language thing. And number two is, these guys are big generals from another country. Oh. So you go to give them a ticket for speeding. Yeah. Uh, that ticket might not go too far. Yeah. We might not go too far either. <laughs> oh, my. How long were you in the service? A couple of years. A couple yeah, two, of years. Two to three years, I think. Yeah. When I got, I got, let me tell you a story. Can I, do I, I have time to tell you a quick oh, one? This, this, is a quick, this, is this is your show. This is a quick one. I'm ready to get out. Okay. Captain William T. Barrett says, come on into my, arpor, my office, Carpal, Carpal Butch, with a spray, <laughs> and sign this paper. Three more years, fifteen hundred dollars. This is in sixty something. Fifteen hundred dollars signing. Dub no, fifteen hundred dollars and another stripe. I would have been <gasps> sergeant. Right. Wow. That's a big step. I would have been sergeant. And did you start laughing first, or did he? <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, "Can I have a day to think about it?" So I, I, I went home, and my wife says, "You got a letter here. You got, you got a letter here from." some talent agency, and it was the talent agency that had booked my band. And it was a lady, oh. very much beautiful and like you. Her name was Jean Chenet. Oh. And the letter, I saw I opened up the letter, and she said, Dear Butch, the book, name of my band was Kent and the Candidates. And then the letter said, Dear Butch, I have a tour booked for you and your band because I know you're getting out of the Army. Oh. And the tour is Kansas City, Oklahoma City, <gasps> Amarillo, Texas, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona, and Hollywood, California. Oh, my Lord. Captain, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Take your Captain, my your captain. Yes. I am sorry. No stripe. No $1,500. I'm going to Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, I'm going to be a star. Yeah. I love so that. that. that was that. So that was the end of the military career, but it was the beginning of you. Plus. Oh, yeah. But, but. but he never stopped serving veterans and no. active duty military True. and performing for our troops. That's right. Then that, you that, have something to say to him now. I do. Yes, you I do. do. Yes. Yeah, because, you see, as president of the L.A. National Cemetery Foundation, we started a new ceremonial coin. Never had one. Never. 120 years. Right. Wow. Never had one. You know, in the military, we call it a challenge coin. Right. But at the cemetery, we call it a ceremonial coin. And it's my honor to present you with this for all of your activity for active duty and military right. your whole life. Yeah. And for keeping those generals from getting in trouble. <laughs> Which to vary so with, with privilege and honor from our board of directors wow. and our director, Tom Ruck. Yes. Thank you. Woo. You know, I had a, my older brother in the Korean War, my other older brother in Vietnam. Really? My family, my nephews and nieces <gasps> in the Marines. We have a whole uh, armed service. I, I was the only one who said uh, uh, Hollywood first. You know, <laughs> but, but you thank served you. as well. Yes, yes, I did. Yes. yes, I did. With an honorable discharge and soldier of the month. There Woo, you go. Yeah. And we get to have you as entertainer of the hour. All right. Hey, thank you thank so you, much. Doug. So thank you, Doug. So when you okay. left, because you had this talent tour coming up, right? What happened? Did the tour. Yeah. Kansas City. Wow. Oklahoma City. Albuquerque. Amarillo. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona, and then into <laughs> California. And the first thing we see is smoke and fire. And we're driving in 1965, August 1965, into Watts, and Watts was on fire. Oh! oh. The Watts riot. That's right. And we're pulling in. Four black guys in a station wagon pulling a trailer full of equipment. Oh! That's it. Get out of the car. Right. Nice and lay lady. on the ground. Oh, lay on the ground. Oh, and my. tell us, we got out-of-state Kansas license plates. You must be looters. 
You got a trailer full of equipment. Where'd you get the equipment? Now, Doug, Doug, tell me what musician carries his receipts around with his equipment. You did. <laughs> I'm, I'm, now, in August in Watts, the pavement is hot. Yeah. Lay down on the pavement oh with the bayonet. God. Oh, my Lord. And tell us, where did you get all these drums and amps and microphones and stuff? And like that? Yeah. I said, if you just let me up and get my briefcase, I will show you. Oh. And finally, they let me up. I got my briefcase. And you had all the receipts. I showed them the contract. No, no receipts. Oh. The contract said, Kent and the Kennedys, the Red Velvet Club, starting August so-and-so, Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, California. That's our equipment. We're musicians. We've been on the road. And our next gig is in Hollywood. Hollywood. Wow. But our organ player has an aunt, and we have no place to stay. We're going to stay in Watts. <gasps> you were going to stay in Welcome Watts. to <laughs> California. <laughs> You recorded artists, the Beach Boys. You were with the Beach Boys. Beach Boys, Doobie Brothers, Sly Billy Stone, Joel. Toured with a lot of wow. people. Wow. From Hollywood, we got noticed. We got we signed with a small independent uh, record label, and I became the musical director for Brenton Wood. And no, had, tell, tell our audience about Brenton Wood. Brenton Wood was a young singer from Compton, right? Whose name was Alfred Smith, which really? isn't too good of a name for an entertainer. But the gentleman who ran the record company, right. Double Shot Records, right. they lived in Brentwood. Get it? Mm. Get Brenton it. Wood. Yes. Sounds better than Alfred Smith. Yes, yeah. yes. And yes. so, and he had a unique way of singing in a little high falsetto right. and stuff. And I became the musical director, and we wrote, and we and then we had two number one hits, Oogum Boogum and Give Me Some Kind of Sign. And we toured with Marvin Gaye. Oogum Boogum, Boogum, how did that go? Oogum Boogum. Ooh, 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 now, baby, you cast your spell on me, you know. <laughs> and uh, teeny boppers loved it because it was lyrically oogum boogum. Right. Oh, but then we did Give Me Some Kind of Sign, which was number one in seven countries. How'd that go? Just give me some kind of sign, girl. Oh, my baby, show me that you're mine, girl. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so I'm the drummer and the musical director okay. and recording on my own, too, with my group, Kent and the Candidates, which was my name then, oh. before I became Butch Dewberry in Nashville and whatever right. like that. And so we toured all over with that. But that was back in the day when there wasn't the MTV and all the stuff yes. it is now. Yes. You know, back then, if you got $200 in a new suit, you were real happy. You know, and we were on the charts and stuff, so you get a certain amount of respect and a certain amount of freebies right. mm -hmm. when you're on the charts. And we were number one in like seven countries. Oh, Mexico, oh, France, oh. England, Canada, the United, we were number one. And so we were making good money and, and I was raising a family and touring all over the world and stuff like that. You produced like Whiskey Flats Golden Jubilee. Now yeah. what was that? That little town I was telling you about, okay. Kernville, California. Oh, well, you got to hear this. Go ahead. Kernville, California. They contacted me because they knew I was in the music business. Right. And they said, we've been having a festival called Whiskey Flats. We have it every year. It's the biggest event of the year. And we want to do an album, a CD, to commemorate our 50th golden anniversary. And we want you to write songs and produce it. And I did, along with my partner, Ed Sanders. So I used all local talent. Now, let me tell you about Kernville. They're very strict, Pink. Oh. They do not allow corporate America into the town. And that's what makes it so charming right. and so cool. We have a pizza place. It's owned by the family in Kernville. We don't have Pizza Hut. We don't have Shakey's. We have a chicken place. It's not KFC. It's not Pioneer. Wow. It's not Jim Dandy. We have Mexican food by a local Mexican family. Love we don't it. allow any, they don't allow any corporate America into that town. Never knew. So they wanted me to do something. And they have a 7-Eleven, but it's not called 7-Eleven. It's called Premium. I know the owner. He said, I need a commercial, Butch, write me something. And I came up with some really good line like, uh, Primo's, Primo's in the place. When it comes time to feed your face, Primo's is the place. You know, because I, you know, I, I write. You know, I write. Right. Then, so then the Chamber of Commerce said, we want something that will draw people to Kernville because we're going to have a website because right. we depend on tourists. Right. If you like water, if you like sunshine, if you like quiet, yeah. if you like antiques, if you like getting away from the big city, Kernville is the place. 
Hugh Houser did a special on it and said one of Southern California's best kept secrets mm -hmm. is Kernville, California. When Hugh Houser was doing California's right. best. So I had to come up with something, and so I came up with that, uh, come, a, come, a, come a to Kernville, we warmly welcome you. If you think heaven is number one, then Kernville's number two. And, and, and That's why you have to perform what you do. Get out of here, Doug. I you love keep, it. You I keep love insisting on that. For that, that very reason, <laughs> that yes, camera just got here, you. Yeah, that's yeah. adorable. So, Butch, you have a something really big coming up, and you've been working on it for a long time, right. and I want our audience to share with it. It's called E.D. the Musical. I want you to talk and tell them what it's about. E.D. Blues. Yes. ED being the sort of slang language for erectile dysfunction. Okay. It is something very widely advertised. Right. There are at least 15 products on the market, right. with the latest one being one called Blue Chew. I won't go any further <laughs> than that, except to say it's a chewing gum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't go out on a date without your chewing gum. Anyway, so... Alonzo Freeman, a good friend of mine and one of my co-writers, we wrote a song called Big Daddy's on the Pill. Yes. Well, the pill we weren't talking about wasn't a birth control pill. It was, at the time, the most popular thing in the world, Viagra. Oh. And so we wrote the song Big Daddy's on the Pill. Okay. The pill, you know, you know, and the lyric says, 49 can become 19. Uh, okay. Anyway, that was the inspiration for the play, okay. and I worked... Five years on it because I wanted it to be universal. Yes. I did not want to use profanity. I did not want to use any kind of uh, sexual stuff or right. negativity right. about it. I wanted it to be funny because somewhere in there, thirty as Viagra would say, thirty million men. Somewhere in there, there's a joke. Yeah. You know, and I was looking for the joke, and so Ed Blues came in. Right, erectile dysfunction, but Ed Blues. Right. It's a May December room. Older guy, younger woman. Right and everything that goes on between them before they consummate their relationship. And it's very funny, funny characters, interracial, right. great music, if I don't mind saying so myself. We're gonna stop for a second and we're gonna have you anticipate the best man I know to sing what he does so well. Butch Duvary, audience, we'll be right back with my friend, and yours now. Thank you. At one time or another, every family is faced with mobility issues for a loved one. Call Before You Fall is here for you with all the safety and mobility solutions your family needs. Come see Alex in the Call Before You Fall showroom, or if you can't, they'll come to you in one of their fully stocked service vans. So put your mind at ease today. Call Alex at 1-800-829-1491. Remember, be on the safe side. Hi, everyone. Pink Lady here. I always tell everyone that the main thing in life is to get up, get out, and get a life. Well, how do we do that? I know how we do it. We read my new book, Get Up. Get out and get a life. And then I always tell you, it ain't over till I or you say it's over. If you go onto Amazon and you want to buy the book, what do you have to write to make sure that you get to the place where you can place the order? This is the little catchy part. Tell me about it. Very easy, okay? Yes. You type in, get up, get out, and get a life, pink lady. That pink lady has to be on the line that you just typed in. And then all you do is read that book. And if you're old enough, okay, there's a chapter in there called Senior Sexuality. And in that chapter, there is one line. Now, if you can find that line and you say, wow, what a line, that is great, send it in to pinklady7 at earthlink.net. And if it's the line that I think it is that says, wow, I think that reminds me of Pink Lady, you will get a box of chocolates. 
How do you like that? So remember, go to Senior Sexuality in my book, Get Up, Get Out, and Get a Life. Remember, it's the life that you so richly deserve. God bless everyone. We are back. Pink Lady presents Butch DuBerry. You are in for a great, great entertaining few moments. Butch is all yours. Take it away. On occasion, it took some persuasion to keep me from saying goodbye. Oh, but you look so pretty this evening, and I got on my new fancy pants. This place is jumping, I got to say something. Come on, darling, this dance. Darling, this dance, let the music take us. The blues ain't gonna break us, we won't give it no chance. Have ourselves a good time. Everything will be fine. Come on, all in this dance. Oh, yeah. Listen. Now we know that love ain't the problem. Because both of us know we still can. We need that fire to bring back desire. And I think it's time you let down your head. Oh, don't make this mohill no mountain. Don't let our little problems get out of hand. The band is still rocking. Conversation is stopping. Come on, darling, let's dance. Woo! Darling, let's dance. Let the music take us. The blues ain't gonna break us. We won't give it no chance. Darling, let's dance. Have ourselves a good time. Everything will be fine. Come on, darling, let's dance. Because a good old fashioned good time has saved many a romance. Say no more, let's hit the floor. Come on, darling, let's dance, let's dance. Oh, yeah. One more time now, bring it down low. Here we go. Darling, let's dance. Let the music take us. The boots ain't gonna break us. We won't give it no chance. Darling, let's dance. Have ourselves a good time. Everything will be fine. Come on, darling, let's dance. Darling, let's dance. Have ourselves a good time. Everything will be fine. Come on, darling, let's dance. What I say, darling, let's dance. Me and you, girl. One more time, darling, let's dance. Yeah, darling, let's dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Now, you know, every relationship that I've been in, and there's been quite a few, it seems like I was always the guy that was wrong, and she was always the lady that was right. And I'm going to dedicate to this, this song to a lady who's always right, the pink lady herself, because this song is number one on her hit parade. And it's called Mrs. Right. They call my baby Mrs. Right. They call me Mr. Wrong. She's a stay at home type, and me, I'm always gone. But I swear, our love is true. Ain't nothing folks can do. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. Scrap your head and see I'll be doggone. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. Now listen. She goes to church on Sunday. I go to the game. She's generous and modest. I'm stingy and I'm vain, but she's as good as I am bad. Lord, what a love you had. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. Scratch your head and see I'll be Say that we're too different, but that's what makes us strong. Cause wrong loves right and right loves wrong. She's champagne in the glass, I'm beer in the can. She's my woman and she 
know that I'm her man. They say that opposites attract. Hell, we know that for a fact. Mrs. Right and Love is the wrong. Hey! Yeah, everybody knows Mrs. Right is always right. And Mr. Wrong, well, we don't know. Wrong and right, we go together. Flying high like birds of a feather. They say that we're too different, but that's what makes us strong. Cause wrong loves right and right loves wrong. She's Mr. Right, I'm Mr. Wrong. Yet somehow, somehow, we get along. along. Well, I'll be doggone. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. Gotta say it again. I'll be doggone. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. Woo! Got your hands on your feet and just say, I'll be doggone. Mrs. Right loves Mr. Wrong. From infants to seniors, AdvantagePlusCaregivers.com provides quality, compassionate caregivers that you can depend on. And for those departing the hospital, our transitional care service delivers significantly improved patient outcomes. So if you or someone you love is in need of home care, call 1-800-687-8066. AdvantagePlusCaregivers.com. We're all about the care. Butch DuBarry, come over here, dear heart, come over here. Butch DuBarry, you have given all of us and my wonderful audience out there, you've given us a gift, not only of truth, but of you. Here is a gentleman, worked hard, served our country, and I thank you for that, so do everyone, became what you wanted to do, a writer, a singer, producer, director, but you did it with the truth. And you gave us, you gave us a gift today Thank by you. your presence with us. There is a better world out there. Can I get a Christmas hug? Yes, you can. <laughs> I love it, love it, love it, love it. We will see you again. Mwah! God bless you all. Wow. Every Sunday in November, Pink Lady brings you outstanding stories of lives Can well lived as we I'm honor the laugh. women and men who have served Stand our country. Right. And watch Pink Lady Presents town, every Sunday at 5. Down. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. They're gonna say, what a guy. I'm gonna play for the sky. Ain't gonna miss a thing. I'm gonna have my fling. I'm gonna live, live. Live until I die The blues I lay low I'll make them stay low They'll never trail over my head I'll be a devil Till I'm an angel But until then Hallelujah Gonna dance Gonna fly I'll take a chance Riding high Before my number's up I'm gonna fill my cup I'm gonna live, 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 live until I die Those blues I lay low I'll make them stay low They'll never trail Over my head